The 2021-2022 NBA season has been crazy so far. We've seen the Phoenix Suns go on 15-game winning streaks. The Houston Rockets go on 15-game losing streaks. Golden State is 17-2. and We've seen LeBron James trying to fight people. It's just been crazy. A lot of unexpected things have happened. And back in July, we saw a lot of unexpected things happening in that NBA draft. Today, my job here is going to be redrafting the 2021 NBA draft class with teams knowing basically what the NBA rookies are going to be like through the first month and a half of the NBA that we've seen so far. With that being said, I'm going to be doing 1 to 11 because I think that's where most of the juiciness really is. Yes, some of your teams may not be getting into this list, but if you want to see me extend this all the way to the end of the first round, just let me know down in the comment section below, but let's hop right into it right now. So with the first overall pick in the 2021 NBA redraft, I have the Detroit Pistons selecting Cade Cunningham out of Oklahoma State. Cunningham was selected first overall in the real draft back in July. Cade so far on this season putting up 13 points, 6 assists, and 6 rebounds on 33% field goal shooting, 24% from 3, and 86% from the free throw line. Cade, in my opinion, is still the best player in this draft when it comes to overall talent and potential, and I think that's just what Detroit needs. They don't have a set need. They basically struggle at every single position, really, besides that small forward, power forward position with Jeremy Grant, but I do not think he's safe in Detroit. Cunningham started off the season very slow with an injury and just poor shooting woes, and I I think that it was a bit concerning just because they were playing him through an injury in my opinion, but now that he's really looks fully healthy, he stepped up big over the last few weeks and I think he looks really good, especially being able to get to a spot, pass the ball, rebound the ball really well, and uh, have Isaiah Stewart's back in a big brawl that happened the other week, which was hilarious. But yeah, the Pistons just really need that franchise guy. Cade Cunningham should fill in that role perfectly. And uh, yeah, so the Pistons selected Cade back in July. They're going to keep Cade Cunningham here. Second overall pick, the Houston Rockets are going to be selecting Scotty Barnes. In real life, they selected Jalen Green. Scotty Barnes so far for the Rafters this season is putting up 15, 8, and 3 on 40% field goal shooting, 26% from 3, 75% from the free throw line. Now, Jalen Green being selected to Houston was a great pick at the time. Green was either the one or the two. Him and Cade Cunningham have battled it out, and Green has looked great in the preseason in the summer league, but so far during this regular season, he's just looked a bit iffy. And with Kevin Porter Jr. being a huge cornerstone and a big guard position for the future in Houston, it was kind of surprising to see them take another guard. But with Scotty Barnes taking a big leap for the Raptors this year, we really see Barnes' true potential. Now, I expect Barnes to just come in and give this Rockets team life. Barnes has a true feel for the game, and I expect him to continue being a leader on and off the court. He's always screaming, calling out plays from the bench. Um, and I just love his court vision, ability to get to the rack. He shows great on-ball defense. And he's definitely my pick right now in real life to win Rookie of the Year. He's been tremendous. If he could keep it up, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that either him or Evan Mobley is going to take away this award. Um, unless someone just breaks out and continues to be on a higher trajectory than Scotty Barnes. So yeah, Houston Rockets selecting Scotty Barnes over Jalen Green here at number two. With the third overall selection in the 2021 NBA redraft, I have the Cleveland Cavaliers selecting Evan Mobley. They selected Mobley third overall in real life back in July, and no doubt in my mind they would make the same exact selection right now. Mobley is going to stay in Cleveland with the third pick, and he's killing expectations so far. He does have a minor setback with an injury, but he is returning very, very soon, which is a great sign. And even with Jarrett Allen starting at center or the forward most nights, Mobley is looking great next to him, putting out 14.5 points a game, 8 rebounds, 2.5 assists on really good efficiency, 49% from the field, 31% from 3, 77% from the free throw line. And like I said, prior to this injury, Mobley looked like an absolute force down on the block, averaging a block and a half a game, which leads all rookies, which is a great stat to have. Mobley just has that great defensive potential and feel that Rudy Gobert kind of gives me. He has that size and his ability to kind of just impact the defense is super, super great. And Mobley, during his time before that injury, the Cavs were rolling. Unfortunately, they just went down with a bunch of injuries. But Evan Mobley is going to stay at three. And I think Cleveland just got a steal back in July. And they get to keep their pick right now. The Toronto Raptors, the North, have the fourth overall pick. And I have them selecting Jalen Green instead of Scotty Barnes here. 
14 points per game, 3 assists, 3 rebounds on 38% field goal shooting, 28% from downtown, and 81% from the line. Green has struggled and is really not living up to the expectations a lot of people set for him during his time in Houston, but I think playing in Toronto will help the kid regroup and surprisingly, I think he's going to look a lot better in a Toronto Raptors jersey right next to Fred Van Vliet. They have the 19-year-old playing next to a great starting point guard in Fred Van Vliet who really knows how to do a lot of the stuff on the offensive side of things. And I think with the glimpses of the sharpshooting and shot creating that we've seen from Jalen Green so far, it intrigues the Raptors to add another star next to Freddie. And I have them selecting here at four, mainly because of that true potential that we've seen Jalen Green can be. I don't think he should fall any farther than four. So I think the Raptors are pretty much, they have to pick Jalen Green at four. And if they don't, then Orlando would definitely take him at five. But even though the Raptors pick a large size wing with Scotty Barnes, they're now going to be able to really run a true starting lineup of Jalen Green, Fred Van Vliet, OG Siakam, and Kem Birch, which sounds like a great now and a great future team. I think this could potentially be a play-in or playoff team. Green's got to step up on his efficiency, but like I said, I kind of saw this um, coming before the season really started because Steven Silas just gave him the green light every single night, which means a lot of shots, a lot of misses, but hey, a lot of points. With the fifth overall selection, I have the Orlando Magic selecting Josh Giddy and the Magic, two top 10 picks in this draft, and that the Aussie, Josh Giddy has surprised everybody. This season, 11 points, 7 rebounds, 6 assists, 40% from the field, a bit subpar from 3, 28%, subpar from the free throw line, 65%, but I don't think that's really anything to worry about for Giddy here. And even though Gonzaga native Jalen Suggs has not been amazing in Orlando, with their original pick back in July, Giddy has surprised so many people in OKC, including myself, and he is by far the best passer in this draft class that we've seen so far. He continues to prove the doubters from draft night wrong, which, once again, is me. Giddy has sort of a unique play style in which he continues to play at his own pace. He's, be, he's just zipping passes all over the court to his offenders. Uh, I don't know why I said offenders like that. Uh, Baisley, Dort, Shea, Ty Jerome. We got great passes to Jeremiah Robinson Earl, who's missed a couple bunnies at the rim, but it's all good. Um, yeah, and Josh Kiddie has been super impressive to me so far. And having a true point guard with a 6'8 frame is something the Magic really need. Ton of scoring potential. And go playing with a bunch of other former first over, not first overall, but first round picks. Cole Anthony, John Isaac when he comes back, having Wendell Carter, Mo Bamba down there. Uh, the Orlando Magic are going to have a bright future, especially with the eighth overall pick they have coming up later on. And while OKC took that reach of a pick with Josh Giddy at six, I have them basically swapping first round picks and now selecting Jalen Suggs here with the sixth overall selection. 12 points a game, three and a half rebounds, three and a half assists. His efficiency is pretty below what we kind of expecting. 34 from the field, 25 from 3, 77 from the line. But he's coming along to play with Shea Gilgis Alexander, which is great having a kind of a two guard duo in that backcourt. Now, a lot of people may be surprised to see this that the Thunder team is passing on three point and shot creating scorers and Chris Diorte and Franz Wagner, but I think OKC will decide to stay young. Build up their young core of elite guards, elite wings. And Suggs has been suffering with a minor injury here and there. But besides that, his scoring and passing abilities have just not really been there in an Orlando Magic jersey. But hopefully playing alongside SGA, Lou Dort, Jalen Suggs will be able to find his will and just pass the ball to great shooters like we saw him do at Gonzaga. I do think Jalen Suggs could be a 15-point-per-game shooter on this OKC squad, getting a ton of starting minutes, a ton of reps up under head coach Mark Dagnall, and OKC will get the Jalen Suggs we expected to see going into this draft. Golden State Warriors at 7 are selecting Chris Diorte out of Oregon, now the originally selected Jonathan Kuminga, who's spending some time in the G League right now and hasn't done much for this Golden State team, but they're 17-2. There's no need to make any changes. So, 
I do have big changes, and that's selecting Chris Diorte, who I think will get good minutes on this Golden State Warriors team. 13 points per game, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, but the real impact he's having is how efficiently he's shooting this ball at a high rate. 36% from 3, 42% from the field, and just having another cr cr creative and just deadly shot creator on this team is insane. Uh, Golden State, tremendous this year with the emergence of Jordan Poole. Draymond Green and Andrew Wiggins are playing efficient, and obviously Stephen Curry is having an MVP caliber season. That's probably the front runner as of right now. And adding Chris Diorte, who's an experienced rookie, will fit right into Steve Kerr's triangle motion offense. The Pacers have played this man to perfection this season, and he showed us that he could be a 30-point guy and hit tough shots when buckets are needed. He does have a 6'6 build, which may be tough to slide to the small forward position because I don't love his defense. But I'm sure when Clay is back, he is most likely not going to be in that starting lineup. And, but I would love to see the duo of Jordan Poole, Chris Diorte coming off that bench for the second unit in Golden State. Orlando, they're back up here at 8. And they just selected Josh Giddy at 5. And I am selecting Franz Wagner, who they originally selected at 8. He's going to be staying with his brother down in Orlando. 13 points per game, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, 43 from the field, 36 from 3, 80% from the line. So Franz Wagner has been very efficient for that Magic team down in Florida. Orlando took Giddy at 5, so now I have them keeping their original pick, which is Franz Wagner. And he surprised me a lot this year, proving that he's not just a spot-up guy. He could cut to the basket. He has really... He has bunnies. I was not expecting to see him postering guys out here this season. But hey, he could do it, and he can do it pretty well. And not only has he been efficient, but he's been an elite. But having an elite passer in Josh Giddy to help out Orlando is huge for them. And I think Franz will be that scoring threat like Terrence Ross has been for the organization. I'm not expecting Franz Wagner to beat Terrence Ross and have that athleticism in the elite, elite scoring. But I think Franz Wagner could definitely step it up and be a key part of that Orlando Magic future. Now, with the ninth pick, back in July, we saw the Kings make a very surprising selection with Davion Mitchell already having two good guards, or three good guards, really, in De'Aaron Fox, Tyrus Halliburton, and Buddy Heald. But now I have them selecting Jeremiah Robinson Earl out of Villanova. JRE for OKC this season is putting up 7 points per game, 5.5 rebounds and assists on very efficient, 45% from the field, 41% from 3 as a big man. And seeing this in Sacramento is going to be great for them. Davion Mitchell's name popping up at 9 was a surprise to everybody. Just due to the elite guards they had, so I think bringing in a 4-5 is great for them. Bagley's future is in jeopardy in Sacktown, and I really want to bring a promising modern big who could play the four and the five. He could switch on the defenders, and he's killing it right now in OKC's, OKC. So I think a large part of that has to do with Josh Giddy's elite playmaking. JRE stretching the floor as a big is huge for them, and being able to shoot a high number of threes at an efficient 41% rate is massive for them in giving fox another pick and roll guy that can rim run as well move out behind the line it really helps out sacramento because darren fox his best ability is getting downhill and getting to the rim so having a guy like jeremiah robinson though will help them out significantly and hopefully get them in the playoffs with the 10th overall selection the memphis grizzlies had this pick via the new orleans pelicans and i had them selecting alperin sangin Sangun on the season is putting up 9 points per game, 5 rebounds, 2.5 assists, 48% from the field, and a surprising 43% from 3. Now, that's not on a huge sample size, however. Sangun will be getting a lot of minutes in Memphis, but sharing a lot of those minutes, however, with Steven Adams. But I love that mentorship that Adams is going to give Alperin, and yeah, he's going to have some great impact on the young Turkish big. Sengen has that huge backbound intensity and that love for the game. And I think having him next to John Moran is going to be helpful for both of them. Like we saw John Wall just spoon feed a lot of guys like Martian Gortat, who turned out to be a good piece and get a lot of money in Washington. Steven Adams, same role with Russell Westbrook, just sitting down on that dunker spot. 
I think that's what Alperin Sengen can do. Even if he's finishing three to six layups or dunks a game, helping John Morant take that leap, which he is needed to have if he wants to be an elite point guard in the league. Helping Morant getting those passing abilities up is going to be nice for Memphis. And I like how Sengen can shoot that three-point shot if you want, even though it's not very often. So Memphis is going to get a great pick there at 10 with Alper and Sengen. And lastly, with the 11th overall pick here in the first round of my 2021 NBA redraft, I have the Charlotte Hornets selecting Herbert Jones. Six points a game, three rebounds, two assists. Not super impressive. You're going to be like, why do you have Herbert Jones? Not the average NBA fan is going to know who Herbert Jones is. But my man... Herbert Keyshawn Jones is one of my favorites from the entire draft class. And having him in Charlotte next to Lamella Ball, Miles Bridges, those elite offensive guys is going to be a ton of fun and super helpful. And like I said, Herbert Jones is not a guy who scores the ball much or puts on an insane offensive clinic, but his defensive abilities and his tenacious hustle is the reason I have him moving up 24 spots from 35 all the way down to 11. Out of Alabama, the pesky defense energetic D, quick feet, going after loose balls, and just being a great team player is something any championship caliber team is looking for. And I think that's really missing in Charlotte right now. They don't have a guy that could step up, be that lockdown defender, be that spark of just defensive light that they need. And James Brega would love to have that. Michael Jordan is going to be selecting Herb Jones here at 11, and he is going to help the Charlotte team win a lot of games in the future. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave it a like. Again, like I said, I'm only doing 1 to 11 because I feel like that's really where it's juicy and a lot of changes can be made. Obviously, changes can be made 1 through 60 and then undrafted guys, but I'm not going to get all into that. I think 1 to 11 is really where I see a lot of potential and a lot of changes being made. But if you guys want to see more moves, let me know down in the comments below. But if you enjoyed the video, please, please, please leave it a like. Leave a comment down below as well. Subscribe if you are brand new. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.